Hi, my name is Jong Min, and today I'm going to start my video blog series. I'm going to take a closer look at current immigration news and give my thoughts and analysis. I hope that we, as immigration activists, can learn from each other and push for more humane, just, and legislative policies across the U.S. So today I want to start off with talking about the immigration bill in the Senate, which did pass 68 votes to 32 in June. And yet the House has yet to take up, up on it because either House Speaker Boehner says about the Hasta rule, which the majority of the Republicans have to agree to it, so either they don't agree on a path to citizenship, apparently that's what everybody thinks and knows, and will that then slowly die in Congress? And that's what Political has said, I guess, last month in an article which um, was widely spread and, and uh, looked upon. You know, and the second thing is that if, if it doesn't pass this immigration bill and it's stuck again, will President Obama use his executive orders action to give uh, undocumented immigrants some sort of deferred action program? You know, will he freeze all the deportations as well? And I think that's such an important issue because, you know, there's immigration activists on one side who want to send an immigration bill. They want a pathway to citizenship. And there's activists on the other side that say, you know, this bill is not good enough. It's a poor compromise. And so, in case it does fail, which, you, you know, there's probably somewhat of a chance, of course, does President Obama use his powers? You know, do we, does he use his powers and for about two years, then can Congress pass something? And I think that's such an important issue, and I think that's what we've been fighting for. And that's why during this August recess, there's been a lot of town hall meetings, people talking to their congressmen, and then even in the Washington Post article, there's, you know, hope, you know, this congressman did change his mind after talking to business leaders, uh, religious leaders, and even undocumented youth. And I think that if we keep pushing, hopefully we get those votes. But with only so many days left this year, and there's only nine legislative days in September, you know, and then they're going to focus on fiscal stuff during that time, immigration may be only taken up in October or November, and who knows what's going to happen then. Will they pass a series of smaller bills? Or maybe they can even put something onto the floor. And if it does go into the floor, can they actually merge it with the Senate immigration bill? And these are very tough questions, and I think a lot of people have a lot of questions about that. Even I think that, you know, I, I would hate to say it, but even I think that it may be a little bit too tough. I think they're going to just drag it on, and then Obama will have to use his executive orders. And I hope I'm wrong, but I, I do hope that, you know, we do keep pushing so that we do get a great immigration bill for our communities. So the second thing I want to talk about today was health care and immigration. From what I understand and, and read about was that hospitals across the U.S., especially in California and Chicago, have denied access to undocumented immigrants for transplants. And it was kind of sad because undocumented immigrants needed these life-saving transplants, but they were not allowed to be put on a waiting list for them. Even though some of them have given organs, they couldn't receive them. And the thing was, they could have dialysis, and which would cost seventy-five thousand a year, but they couldn't have a new liver, which would cost a hundred thousand at one, at just one setting. And so, what happened, from what I understand, this past week in Chicago was that fourteen undocumented immigrants had a hunger strike, and I think it was about a week or ten days because they wanted to meet with the Chicago hospital administrators about being put on a wait list because most of them or all of them had been denied, and. Eventually, they did have a meeting with them, and I think the hospital will reconsider or allow them to be on waiting list. But the caveat is that even though they're on the waiting list now, or will be in the future, is that they have to prove their income. They have to prove that they can actually afford this transplant and medication and recovery afterwards. And with, and with no insurance, no health insurance for undocumented immigrants, there's no way. So on one hand, you could maybe be on a waiting list, but if you don't show income or a lot of income, I don't think they'll give it to you. And I think that's why even organizing for this and trying to have a national push for transplants for undocumented immigrants is going to be critical and necessary in the future, especially with Obamacare, because I don't think under Obamacare they'll even have greater access. It might be even more limiting. 
I, and we have yet to see what's going to happen. But with the, you know, with the, this great debate on immigration and health care, it's something we have to look upon because, you know, hospitals have been recently deporting undocumented immigrants, you know, after they've been in a coma. And since they didn't want to pay for it, they just deported them back to Poland and Mexico. And it was just so sad because, you know, this, this is where we, sh we are and this is where we're living. And the next thing they know, they're in a terrible accident and they're back somewhere to a foreign land. And I think that there should be some policy against that. The, 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 that is not right. And I, and I think that just because it's financial, we've been, th that's another burden for undocumented immigrants because not only do they not have access to health care, they don't have the money. And then, okay, we'll see you later. We wash our hands. And um, that's not great. And I think the organizing and hopefully the momentum building for hospitals to treat us as like people, you know, in regards to just care, I think that's what we need to do. And I think that's going to be really critical, especially in the next coming year and the, in the futures. The last thing I want to talk today, of course, is about the Dream Nine. You know, these undocumented immigrants were deported back to Mexico or have left voluntarily. And then three dreamers themselves went back to Mexico. They organized. And then they came through, came back to detention centers to try to be readmitted to the United States. And it was just amazing because after 17 days of organizing, calling, and um, social networking and getting congressmen to talk about them, eventually they were released. And wow, bravo to them. Because I think some will say, David Leopold will say that they went too far, they're crazy kids. Others will say they're courageous. And I'm on that camp. They're courageous because they brought a light to all the 1.7 million deportees over the, un, under the Obama administration. Remember, Obama promised an immigration bill, but has yet to deliver. And the only thing we could show for it, I guess, is deferred action. But what about the people who are not dreamers? Even I don't have deferred action because I've aged out. And I think we need to show that there's more than just dreamers who need to be affected by this. There's more than that. But of course, this was just the first step. And, and I think that, you know, for our parents, you know, there's, there's been people who've been deported that we know of. Evelyn Rivera's mom, who works at United We Dream, her mom was deported and, you know, she, she eventually, she saw her mom recently at the border and it was a very poignant scene. I just hope that the organizations, Nia and United We Dream and anybody else, can work together so that we could actually bring people back home. Because, you know, it's no fun just, you know, having your family split and uh, separated with no hope of ever seeing them again in person. And, you know, if, if there's a chance and a way, I'm not sure through asylum or whatever there is, I would hope to know so that we could actually bring people back, maybe from South Korea. You know, I, I think that there's people who want to come back from all over the world. And I think there's people who want to migrate there as well. But until we have a just immigration system, that's not going to happen. And I don't think we should be waiting another year, two years, or five years to make this happen. So currently right now, I hope we can work on a better system. If you wish to know more about me and other dream stories, please check out our film Living Undocumented at livingundocumented.com. You can also check us out on Facebook as well. And if you have any questions as well, you can message us on Facebook. I'll be happy to respond to them and reply to them as soon as I can. And if there's any other dreamers who would want to go back to Korea with me and come back through any, any means possible, please let me know as well. I'm just kidding, maybe. Thank you, and we'll see you soon.